Hey there everybody, uh, happy new year from where in DC, hope everyone's holidays were good, post eggnog hangover is uh, perhaps wearing off a little bit now, <laughs> uh, and uh, we're back in the groove of real estate. So as everyone knows, this is a weekly video blog, I'm Brian Gormley, we, uh, we film all over the greater DC, Baltimore area, and um, actually while I'm talking, today we're going to go ahead and give a little stroll uh, down Main Street here. We do film all over the, the greater DC area and different place uh, each week. The first person to correctly send in a, uh, our filming location, I guess, um, to support at Cornerstone Properties HomeInfo.com uh, gets a free prize each week. So um, have fun with it. <laughs> so uh, so here we go down Main Street. Um, lots of fun. It's uh, it's easier to figure out where we are. Um, if I actually give you a little bit more of a clue, we're trying to do a little harder uh, this year because the reality is. Uh, it's gotten too easy. You can get too many, uh, too many people guessing the right things. So, um, get a little, a uh, little harder for, for, uh, for a while. So, anyway, the, the um, hot topic in short sales uh, this, this uh, beginning of this year is on the extension or lack thereof of the uh, Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act. Uh, and uh, that was an act uh, in, uh, in 2007 that allowed uh, homeowners who lived in their pro house as the primary residence uh, to not recognize uh, cancellation of indebtedness income. Okay, so what that what that means is if you do a short sale or you do a loan mod or even if you have a foreclosure um, and you owe more than the house is worth and the the, uh, the bank ends up forgiving uh, that uh, that extra amount of debt that you didn't pay them, uh, the uh, the uh, IRS considers that to be uh, taxable income, and it makes sense. That's a that's a good posture. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, imagine if you were uh, getting a loan from a friend of yours for a hundred dollars, and they said, "Oh well, you know, just forget about repaying me. I, you know, I know you've got some hard times. Um, you know, it's it's all right. You're your friend. No big deal." Well, the IRS would say that's income because that's a hundred dollars to you that you didn't pay back, <clears throat> and so it's not a debt, and uh, you got a hundred bucks. It's the same thing in the mortgage world. If you got, um, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to buy a house, and you only end up paying sixty of it back, then you got forty thousand dollars of what's considered income. The Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act 2007 said that $40,000, if it's your primary residence and you didn't take money out um, to as a non-qualified housing expenditure, meaning you didn't take a HELOC out and go on a cruise or pay college loans or, or credit cards off or you know whatever you wanted to do with it, not related to housing, then that's then that's uh, forgiven debt. You don't you don't have to worry about paying tax on it as long as it fits in that category. Okay, um, that that law expired. 12-31-2013, and so it's got you know homeowners and uh, realtors sort of up in arms because there's still quite a few short sales and foreclosures out there, and um, you know homeowners are like, well, what do I do? Do I do bankruptcy? Do I um, continue with a short sale? Do I just let it go to foreclosure? What? Okay, so a couple of points here. Number one. Um, there has been some talk, and it only occurred really late in the year, of extending it. Um, this is going to happen, if it's going to happen at all, uh, when the new budget comes out. Um, I believe that that is set for discussion and uh, possible enactment in February. So it would go retroactive. It would go. It would you know it would stick to January 1st, so there wouldn't be any gap period if it was enacted, um, and uh, it would just continue on whatever the uh, you know the law that was already passed. So that's point number one. There's no uh, guarantee of that. Obviously, we're living in a, in a uh, political milieu right now where uh, you've got major, major budget battles uh, and money is very tight, and you know people are being furloughed and so on. So, how high a priority is this? We'll see. Um, it's another tax provision. It's a little. It's you know it's a little easier in the sense that it doesn't negatively affect any group. Um, it's a little harder in the sense that there's no not necessarily uh, you know a collective group of homeowners that are lobbying for it. Now the, of course the National Association of Realtors would, would probably lobby hard and they are a strong lobby, but we'll see we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so that's um, that's point number two. Point number three, just because and this is very important, just because uh, uh, the the uh, Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act has expired and perhaps may not be extended doesn't mean that homeowners shouldn't do short sales for a couple of reasons. Number one, 
they're still going to get tagged with income if, if, if it were to apply um, if, in a foreclosure. Okay, and in fact, probably more income because um, foreclosures go for less than short sales by definition, otherwise the bank wouldn't accept the short sale. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two on that is uh, there is another exception that may apply. It certainly has not uh, expired. It was here before the 2007 legislation, and it will be here uh, after it as well. It still, uh, it still exists in the Internal Revenue Code, and that's the insolvency exception. The insolvency exception says, uh, you know, basically it's a financial hardship exception. It says, you know, if you tally up your assets and your liabilities, don't include the subject property in the calculation. If you are insolvent, if your liabilities exceed uh, your assets, or, or at least it's net zero, you won't owe any tax. And if you have, um, uh, you know, if, you're, if you do have uh, net assets, meaning a net positive number after you compare your assets versus liability, and that's not income and expenses, that's not monthly cash flow, that's, you know, assets would be cash, stock, and, uh, bonds, uh, value of other property, IRAs, 401ks, but liabilities would be, you know, what's the outstanding balance of your credit cards, student loans, car payments, other other mortgages, etc. Um, so, sorry, got a little traffic here. <laughs> um, so, uh, if it's if it's net positive, then you're only going to have taxable income to the extent that it's net positive. So, if you've got $100,000 of canceled debt, but only $10,000 of net assets, then you have, you're only going to be subject to $10,000 of extra income, and then you multiply that by your marginal tax rate, 25%, 18%, 28%, whatever you're in. So, you know, ten, sticking with my scenario, $10,000 of extra income at 25%, marginal tax rate is only $2,500. It's not a big deal and not a large amount of money. Um, so anyway, that's it. Most people, I will say, are uh, tax law insolvent who are doing a short sale. So the reality is, even if they don't extend this, um, you know, most people won't see any effect on their uh, taxes. In fact, over the last seven years of negotiating short sales, I've only seen one person think that they owe any tax. So just to give you a, uh, a sense, it probably touched, you know, a thousand files. Okay, so that's the tax thing. Uh, don't forget, send your guesses. Uh, support at Cornerstone Properties, homeinfo.com. We do negotiate short sales. Get in touch with us if you want to chat about your deal or, um, you know, either you're stuck or if you want us to negotiate for you, we'd be uh, be happy to do that. Uh, and look out for a lunch near you. We are going to start these uh, lunch, and, lunch and learns again. Uh, we've got a lot of really cool stuff that we're, um, we're opening up uh, this year um, that is uh, not even necessarily related to short sales. So uh, don't, uh, don't forget uh, to watch out for that. Thanks so much. Happy New Year. And uh, we'll talk to you next week.